Hey everybody, this is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks. Today, let's talk about how to be a great public speaker. And basically, here's my system, S-P-E-A-K, on how you can become a better public speaker. When people think about public speaking, uh, a few things come to mind. I don't know what to say. I have a fear of public speaking. How am I gonna look, right? It's, the S stands for your state of mind. So what kind of a state of mind are you in when you enter a public speaking situation? Or even if you're in a, a networking situation, you know where you have to go around and say, hmm, I have to introduce myself, I have to introduce myself. Oh, I'm gonna be the next person going up next, right? What is your state of mind when you're going up into these situations? Here's a few ways to think about it. A lot of people have a fear of public speaking because they see public speaking like a lion. So if there was a lion in front of the room, what would you do? You would literally run, right? But nowadays with public speaking, we, we don't move our bodies uh, because we're usually in an office space. So if there was a lion in the room, you would literally move your bodies, right? Because we have this energy, we have this nervous energy. But in public speaking situations, we have this nervous energy inside of us, but we are usually inside an office space. So what happens when you have this nervous energy? Some people, they don't even breathe. So they keep this nervous energy inside of them, right? Some other times, they might, the nervous energy might come out this way. They might fidget their hands. So here's a, a thought of the day. If you were a basketball player, right, and you're going to your championship game, would you be going to the game thinking, shoot, I can't shoot my free throw, or would you be on the bus listening to motivational music, right? What kind of a state of mind can you put yourself in to put yourself in the best mood, the best light before you enter these situations? Here, uh, here, was, a, here was a research that was done by Harvard. They split up 100 people, 50 of the people, they said to calm down and just breathe before they gave a talk. The other 50 people, they were like, Tony Robbins style, hey, you can do it. They gave a motivational music, ah, you know. What they found out was that the people that were motivated were more engaging to the audience. Now, I'm not saying don't calm yourself down, don't relax and breathe, but I am saying what kind of a state of mind, right, can you put yourself in to become a great public speaker? The P stands for posture. If you want to be a great public speaker, you have to know how to work your body language. Most people ask, what do I do with my hands? There's something called the box. You know in a normal conversation, your hands will be flowing like this. Keep it the same when you're in the public speaking to a crowd of people. Because when you do this, it simulates a normal conversation. Just like, hey, I'm looking at you right now and I just want to gesture to you. Same exact thing. So again, you can keep your hands in the box like a normal conversation. When you want to emphasize a point, you can bring it up. Look, my program is about A and B. What do you all think, right? So, when you put it outside the box, you're gonna seem a little bit more energetic. Now, that's not a bad or good thing. You're just gonna, you're just gonna seem a little bit more energetic, right? But even if I'm doing this right now, look, here's about this and this and this. Can I help you? Can I help you, right? It's different from saying, can I help you? Or can I help you? It seems more direct, it gives you more energy. And also, uh, I wanna give you a few body language hacks, uh, hand gesture hacks. So. If you do this one, I'm gonna do this one right now. No matter what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sound a little bit more intelligent just by doing this, all right? This is, think of this as an intelligent pose. Now, I'm not saying you can't put your hands down and talk. I'm just saying, can you control your body language so you know what message you're conveying, right? So think of this as, no matter what you're saying, okay, I'm gonna sound a little bit more intelligent just by doing this. Now, if you wanna be more firm, try this one. Today, I want to talk to you about this, and this, and this. My program is about one, two, and three. So you can cut up, or you can cut down, right? I'm not changing my vocal variety, I'm just changing what my body language does. So, if you want to be more firm, just do a, something like this. If you want to be more welcoming and open, keep your palms up. Because look, when you keep your palms up, it's just more inviting, it's more welcoming. And here's the other thing you can do. You can gesture to people. What do you think about this, right? What do you all think about this? So, you can be more welcoming and friendly. And when you do this, and you're directly doing this to someone, they're going to be thinking, hmm, why is that person gesturing at me, right? So, if you want to be a little bit more intelligent, more firm, and more open, just keep your palms up like this. And sometimes switch it up. Bring your hands out, bring your hands in. 
So the P stands for posture. Okay, are you ready for this? The E stands for, what do you think the E stands for? The E stands for eyes. This is one of the most important part about public speaking because if you're not looking at anyone, who are you really talking to, right? Some people think, hmm, I need to glance around in the room to the, to the back, to the middle, to the back again. But when you're doing that, who are you actually connecting with? If there was a keynote speaker and that keynote speaker was looking directly at you and you felt like he or she was talking specifically to you, how would you feel, right? Won't that change your whole experience? So here's the rule of thumb for eyes. Try to keep engaged with the eye contact for, I'm gonna say 10 seconds. Just think about that, okay? You will probably not do it in real life, but think about, hmm, I wanna talk to you for 10 seconds and then switch to someone else for 10 seconds. Switch to someone else. Because you cannot look at everyone at the same time, but if you can really authentically focus and talk to someone just for at least 10 seconds, that will change the whole experience. Okay, here we go. The A. The A stands for enunciation, right? We talked about your body language. We talked about your eyes. Now we're gonna talk about enunciation, which stands for vocal variety. Right? Earlier I showed you body language hacks, a hand what, what you should do with your hands. Same exact thing with your vocal variety because look, if I switch up my hands all the time, it's gonna give you a different message. Now I'm not saying you can't do this with your hands, right? But if you know how to control it and do a different arm gesture, you're gonna look visually appealing. Now, here's the thing. You can do the same exact thing with your voice. You can take a pause, you can speed things up, or you can speak a little bit louder, right? Now, some people think to uh, emphasize the point, they have to speak louder. That's not always the point. You can speak longer. When you speak longer, your words will come out more smooth. So think of making your words longer and not always louder, okay? So if you wanna emphasize a word, think of how long you can say things. When you slow things down, what do you think happens? your words become more important, right? Because when you take a pause, people are waiting for your next words. Now, when you go faster, like I am going now, you're gonna seem a little bit more interested and you can compel people to action. Now, here's where the secret kicks in. When you know how to go fast and go slow, go softer, or speak louder, that's when you can capture your audience's attention. Just like body language, they can hear different things and they're like, hmm, that's a great speaker because they're changing how they say things, they're changing up the body language. So, vocal variety, enunciation, the A stands for, is crucial to becoming a great public speaker. Okay, don't hate me for this. The K, okay, the K stands for connection. Aha, uh -huh. connection. Now, S-P-E-A, we're all things that we're not talking about content, right? We talked about our state of mind, body language, enunciation, eye contact. Most of you are probably thinking when you think of public speaking, what do I have to say? How do I organize my talk? What kind of content do I need to inspire, to motivate people? Half of the battle is uh, your mentality. Half of it is your content. So usually I break it up by style and delivery. Those were the first le four letters. And now we're gonna talk about the content. Now the content can go into a whole nother world, so I just want to get the, the surface of it. The key to connecting with people is you have to speak to the head and speak to the heart. So the head is logic. You know how, I'm not sure about you, but have you ever been in, in a presentation that was just dry and boring? That probably means it's too much logic, too much, you know, too many facts. Have you talked to someone that just gave you the whole story all the time, like a sob story or whatever story it is, and you're thinking, what's the point, right? They, they can talk to you for 20 minutes and then at the end, why are you telling me this story? So if you wanna be a good connector and if you wanna create good content, talk to the head and talk to the heart. There was a study done, you know, Martin Luther King, Obama, they researched all of these great, great talks to know how to inspire, uh, move people to action, uh, motivate them. 65% is on emotional appeal. 25% is on logical appeal. And the last 10% is credibility. 
Okay, so again, 65% is talking to the heart, 25% is logic, and then 10% if someone introduces you, if you have if, if you have your bio, if you can just state what you do, just for a little bit, you have to build your credibility. Because why would you listen to me and someone that's off the street, for example, right? So how can you create content? Knowing this fact, how can you give more stories, appeal to people's uh, hearts, how can you relate with them? And at the same time, how can you back it up with facts, like I just did, research, right? Facts, quotes, details, and then you know, talk a little bit about yourself because people want to learn about you. So, we have S-P-E-A-K. Thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me. My email is kit at bostonspeaks.com. That is my personal email. But I would love to help you out with your public speaking.